street chicken if he misses the second free throw. There's nothing more dope about a woke play. Here's your job. Oh, he gave him chicken. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Ah. Who Boogie putting his money on? I think everybody wants to see Mike Tyson break his f***ing jaw. But this is my biggest concern. That young boy's strength and that old man's strength is two different type of strengths. You have a box before, Peg? You done got enough? I definitely did. I'm 6'6", 250 pounds, fighting a Caucasian man, 5'10", above 80. Easy peasy, lemon, lemon squeezy. Bam! I hit him so hard, I was like, oh, sh that's when I knew like white people really like, they like it. Like, oh. He was like, yeah, mother come again. I'm like, bro, I can't break this dude face, bro. Cause man dies in a boxing <laughs> ring trying to spar with a NFL player. Russell Wilson says he opened doors for black quarterback. Wow. Anyway, you have to get credit where credit is due. Hold on, no, 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 no. Ocho. Wait, 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 Harry, wait. Oh, Every man. kiss begins with pig. Hey, oh, <laughs> man, I showed your boy some love. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Not a lot of people could say that they got a statue of themselves, though, pig. I can. God forbid somebody goes down, if you pick up that phone. I'm not opposed to it. Do I think he will come back? I'm, I'm good. I make more up here than down there. Welcome to 4th and 1. Wow, I always got it done. Uh -huh. Welcome to 4th and 1. I always got it done. So what? Welcome to 4th and 1. Wow, I always got it done. And I always got it done. I always got it done. Bringing facts by the ton before the rising of the sun. Uh. These are facts by the ton uh. for the rising of the sun. Come on. But this ain't me in the shotgun. Ooh. This ain't football season. What get that out of here? What give me the season in? What the? This is me in front of TV having a whole lot of fun. Here we go, first down. Peggy, what's good, boo? Call y'all on your shit, Peg. What? You're changing, Peg. How I'm changing? You're getting Hollywood on me, Peg. <laughs> Don't call me Holly now. Let me ask you this, Peggy. What's Before we get into our show. Uh huh. Has your life changed since people found out that you are who you are when they see you? You be like, that's your, that's the dude from. Man, I've been signing autographs, kissing babies, man. Huh? You know what I'm saying? I gotta get security soon, dog. They on me. That's big, that big, man. I see him in the street. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see, go, see. Go. You're getting out of hand. Hey, I would like to tell all my viewers, make sure you go to iconicsaga.com and become an Iconic Saga member. No, scratch that. Become an icon, icon today. Go to IconicSaga.com to see exclusive content and be a part of the chance of winning free giveaways. Now, what we've already put on the platform for the people is my take on the 2010 Iron Bowl. Yes, yes. Just for a dollar a month, you can receive content just like that and obviously exclusive giveaways as well. IconicSaga.com to become an icon today. Viral moment of the week. What we got, Peggy? Man, we got a little free chicken for everyone. Check me out. Fans are getting excited here. There might potentially be some free Boba chicken from the on the board if he misses the second free throw. Oh, man, free chicken on the board. Yeah, so that's why the fans are getting a little, little frothy. Oh, they're pointing to him. Bobon's playing with the crowd. Say, you want chicken? Here's your job. Oh, he gave him chicken. He's a man of the people. So, if he misses a free throw, Boban, if he misses the free throw, all the fans get free chicken in the arena with their ticket. So, he missed a free throw on purpose. So, he's a man of the people, man. Boban! Hey, listen, let me tell you something. There's nothing more dope about a woke player. Mm -hmm. Now, that could be, it could be distracting to some because everybody can't interact with the crowd or be at peace, Peggy. Mm -hmm. Boban knew the assignment. Boban is for the people. He for the people. To Even though he a, a gentle giant, uh -huh. my boy said, you know what? I got y'all. I see what y'all trying to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit, chicken, chicken, chicken. Ah. The motherfucker got everybody some chicken okay. that night. And you can see with the crowd, like everybody was excited for him to just acknowledge 
what was going on, what was on the line. Woo, mm-hmm. woo. Now, two piece. I don't know if they won the game. It didn't damn matter if they won the game. I hope they was up. He understood the assignment. And that fan's experience was heightened with that. That's so true. you love to see it. From a fan, you just be like, damn, dog, we let's do our part. Like, ah. Boom, got free chicken. Have now, you ever did some giveaways or knew about it? Like, did I? Know? Shit. Gave a lot of giveaways away. I believe it was either the 2014 or 2015 season. Before the year, everybody who signed up could get a raffled uh, jersey, game-worn jersey, but you also had to donate to the Cam Newton Foundation. For every touchdown, you had to donate $100. Mm. So... That yeah, went crazy. There you go. Go crazy then, bud. We did good with that money. We gave back to the people. You know what I'm saying? We impacted a lot of lives. So thank you for your donations and the people who understood the assignment. Next clip. Man, Paul versus Iron Mike Tyson. Jake Paul. Authenticity a little different now. Jake Paul and Mike. So they are scheduled to have their fight July 20th on Netflix. And it's rumored for them to make 50 to 300 million dollars from the fight. So it's a sliding scale right there. Who you got? Who Boogie putting his money on? One thing about it, them damn Paul brothers, uh-huh. Jake and Logan, they very strategic. Okay. Shout out to them. Who I'm going for, who everybody wants to win. If you were to do a poll, mm-hmm. I think everybody wants to see Mike Tyson break his fucking jaw. <laughs> but that's when you know you have arrived. Yeah. Jake Paul has been the figure in sports that he knows people don't like him, but he uses that as fuel. He uses that as a way to say, whether you like me or not, or you're my biggest fan, make sure you tune in, and I'm going to get this money regardless. regardless. Whether I get knocked out or knock him out, I'm still making money. Yes, and when you are able to do that, either or money, shh, you're winning. Mm-hmm. Or you won, son. So I'm obviously I'm going for Mike Tyson because I am a fan of Iron Mike. And I don't know if Mike Tyson has ever been in this position of being a crowd favorite while he was boxing. Mm-hmm. I say that respectfully. I said it again. While Michael Tyson or Mike Tyson has boxed professionally, I don't think he ever was – a crowd's favorite. How you say that? Crowd's favorite meaning I'm he not talking villain. about inside the ring. I'm talking about outside the ring. He always was the villain, the bad guy. Yeah. This is not the case in this situation. He's the good guy. Everybody is rooting for him. Oh, he the hero. Uh, hero Mike. Knock his ass out, Mike. <laughs> but this is my biggest concern. What? Is he his best version of himself? Mm. I mean. And that's where it's like. That young boy strength and that old man strength is two different type of strengths. That is true now. Let's do the age breakdown. So the truth of the the truth of the matter is this. It doesn't matter how you feel about Jake Paul, going back to him being very strategic. Mm-hmm. He knows he's not fighting the best version of Iron Mike. Yeah. This may be mm. Michael. <laughs> I don't know about Iron Mike. Yeah. We want to see him knock his ass out. Plastic Mike? Mm. But I'm, I'm, my point is this. There's a 30-year-old age gap. Yeah, 30, 30 Jake years. Paul is 27, right? Yeah. Mike Tyson is 57. 
So you mean to tell me, me at 27, motherfucking Joe Montana could compete with me or beat me? Hell no. And I love, you know, Joe Montana. It's just the age, the, the, the father of time has just jumped on your ass. Mm. And Mike Tyson looks good. Yeah, he did. He, he looks change. damn good. But this is where I have slight concern that we all know that he's not fighting the best version of Mike Tyson. It's all hype. Yeah. It's all hype. A lot of people want to see Mike Tyson knock Jake Paul out. But Jake Paul knows that he doesn't have that same strength. It looks good. When you're hitting them damn mitts and you're hitting that damn heavy bag and all that sparring and one time, two times. It's a little different when you're in round six. Yeah. Yeah, on you. you ever boxed before, Peg? Yeah, man, I used to box around the house. You know what I mean? No, brother. I'm talking about, have you ever got into a ring? Nah, I ain't, I ain't got in a ring. That's the longest three minutes. Of your life? You done got in there? I definitely did. Look at you, bud. Story time. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Buckle up. <laughs> True story. What's up? A couple years back, shout out to my dog, very renowned, world-renowned movie director by the name of Peter Berg. Mm -hmm. Peter Berg produced my first uh, national commercial. It was with Under Armour. It also was with Tom Brady, right? Dope ass experience. I met Tom Brady on set. It was just one of those things that I was like, damn, like this is cool. Over the years, we still kept in contact, you know, and I was always a fan of artistry, right? I'm always mm -hmm. a fan of like creating. He obviously produced many damn films. My favorite film that he produced or directed was Lone Survivor with Mark Wahlberg. So when we reconnected in LA, he was shooting a movie. I can't remember what movie it was. And he was like, yo, what are you doing with, about training? I was like, man, I'm a big boxing fan. I've never boxed before. He said, listen, I want to see you first thing in the morning, 7 a.m. He tried me because he was he tried to shoot it early. Yeah. I'm, I want to do 7 a.m., be at the gym, and we'll box three rounds. So I'm like, bet. Side note, too, he knew I was a big fan of the OJ series. Rest in peace, right? During that time, that's when the People vs. OJ had just came out. So that's how long ago this was. Yeah. FX, uh, FX had did a, a biopic series of the trials or the People vs. OJ during the whole uh, thing. Uh, Cuban Gooden Jr. was playing OJ in a, a, a whole slated cast that was well done. He also took me to Brentwood and reenacted what the police report showed OJ to do. So I was like, yo, he was like, yo, so this is the, this is where the limousine was that was supposed to pick OJ, bro, it was a, a, one of the top tier experience that I've ever had in my life because I was so invested. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was so, this is, so it went like this. I watched the people versus OJ, I'm hooked. Then 30 for 30 did, uh, a, a, a documentary on O.J. Simpson too. So I was like, yo, all this O.J. Simpson fucking content, like you really understood the type of person that O.J. was. And then to get that reenactment, going back to the actual house and where everything was, it was dope. Fast forward to the next morning. Mm -hmm. Boom. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. I right. walk in that motherfucker by like 6.58. He already in mid-sweat. I'm like, shit, boom. I forgot what the dude's name was. Dude was like, hey, hey, Joe. Yeah, what's going on, Pete? I want you to uh, help Cam out, get him ready, and in 30 minutes, we're going to do three rounds. <laughs> I've already been training, so I wasn't in, I was already in shape. This a piece of cake. You know what I'm saying? Easy peasy, lemon, lemon squeezy. squeezy. So I'm like, shit, this movie director, you know what I'm saying? He used to motherfucking doing some motherfucking, some scenes and cuts and shit like that. Yeah. So 30 minutes go by, really like 35, 45 minutes went by, boom. He was like, you ready, Cam? Come Pete, on, champ, come get on. in there. I'm ready. 
Motherfucker <laughs> literally was in there. We put our helmets on, uh, our cushions, yeah. face mask on. He put his face mask on. Everybody, it was about seven or eight people in the the ring at that uh, or the gym at that particular point in time, and everybody was all around. So I'm like, this shit happening. <laughs> I think. I was real. You see what I'm saying? Ding ding. I'm still laughing, like you know, I'm like yeah. <laughs> this. Shit. Now, granted, I'm six six, two hundred and fifty pounds, fighting a Caucasian man that has to be every bit of five nine to five ten, a buck eighty with the sweat. So I'm like, bro, he can't. Come on, you're going against like pain. I'm. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, I'm just gonna keep my reach and whatever. So I'm, I'm laughing approaching him and I stick my hand out, you know what I'm saying, like laughing. The motherfucker hit my hand, boom! I said, okay, cool. So now I'm, I'm approaching him, I'm looking down at him type shit. That's how engulfing my, my, my yeah. stature was on him. The motherfucker swung, hmm. I said, oh, oh, you for real, like, ah. oh. No, he, like, if that shit would have hit. It would have knocked some shit. It would, like, bro. Oh, you. Oh, oh, oh. Boom. You ain't so slap boxing no, no more. we ain't slap boxing. Like, like it's for real. <laughs> you pull your like, like, you know, up. so All boom. Right. There it go. So now when he swung for real, I seen it in his eyes. Like, oh, he it was a, <laughs> any, ah. any black man know when a black man pull up his damn he yeah. man my pants already was up but yeah. it's like when you pull up them damn pants it's, it's like all right, all right all right let's go type shit so boom he hit it he swung again and like scathed my face I'm like oh shit no it's it's for real now I went now we probably like a minute and 45 seconds left because we was just filling each other out but at the end of the day it was happening right there yeah so it's almost like watching a real boxing match when you like, it goes from like two cats, yeah. two cats, and then boom, somebody throw, boom, miss, somebody throw again, miss again, boom. He swung, it kind of scared me a little bit. I heard the people in the crowd like, ooh, ooh yeah. a little bit. I was like, nah, you didn't hit me, yeah. bro. Like that was one of them, like I had, nah, this motherfucker, nah, now the showman turn coming up. Bro, I held my hand out to, to just, the. Get the distance. To get the distance. He tried to do that shit one more time. And as soon as he reached to try to hit my hand, I hit him dead in the shit. Bam! I hit him so hard. I was like, oh shit, you straight? That's when I knew like white people really like, they like shit like that. Oh. He was like, yeah, motherfucker, come again. I was like, whoa. I'm like, bro, I can't break this dude face, bro. Cause commercial, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like, all opportunity is Out over. The window. What the fuck is that explanation gonna look like? Show up. Man dies in a boxing ring <laughs> trying to spar with a NFL player. And I can tell you, I didn't have good form. Like, bro, I'm right-handed. My left hand was weak as fuck, but he bit the bait. So when I was, I was just holding my hand out just to just yeah, to strike because I seen yeah. the first time he hit it hard. I'm like, all right, cool. he but he swung on. hard too, yeah. and I'm like, oh. I see what you're doing. So boom, I hit it out again, and boom, straight fucking jab, straight to his nose. Boom, hit his ass so fucking hard, but he he wasn't phased by it. So we went around, and I'm like, damn, I'm tired as fuck. The second round come again, boom, he tried to kind of blitz me with just throwing a lot of punches. So Flurs. I'm over here like, I'm rope a in this motherfucker. The down. But now we really, by the midway of the second round, I'm realizing like, oh, we fighting for real. Yeah. But it was, a, it was a respect shit where I had a whole found respect for boxers. You know what I'm saying? The Javantes, the Floyds, the Oscar De La Hoyas, the Iron Mikes, yeah. the Lennox Lewis, the Holyfields of the world. And I'm saying to myself, like, damn, bro, the third round? So you was out of there. It wasn't that I was, I, it was like I was conscientious of energy control. Because mm -hmm. it's like a, a imaginary meter of energy. It's like, bro, I cannot throw a hook because I don't want to get my ass embarrassed in front of all these seven people that's in this motherfucker. I mean. Nor do I want to waste my time or waste my energy knowing that, bro, I got to be very strategic. 
So long story short, Pig, I have boxed before. Mm -hmm. uh, the one and only, shout out to Peter Bird. Um, and that was something that just gave me more respect for boxers. Yeah. But does Jake Paul get the best version of Mike Tyson? He don't. But I still, I think Mike still might hang in there. That's just me. I want to believe. I it. hope so. Because if he knocked Mike Tyson ass out, does that affect how you look? The history of Mike, the legacy does of that Mike? Fuck, does that fuck up his legacy? No. Shit. That's a real question. I don't know if the... Uh, if, if Mike Tyson, and I'm going to say yes, because I'm going to tell you this. Let's change the opponents. When Floyd Mayweather was going over there to damn China and getting them big bags just to have a, a 10 round, 8 round, 12 round sparring session with the Korean uh, boxers, if he would have got his ass knocked out. His bag would have dropped. It's not even the, 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 the stigma of who and how great Floyd the Mayweather unbeaten, was. Yeah. Say it. Yeah, Mike has lost so before. Floyd had an unbeatable, like, I haven't lost. You know, I haven't right. took I no L's. Mike, it's like we know we've seen him lose. We've seen him at his best. He wasn't there no more. And Mike coming off a hard life. This hard, before hangover, real hangover Mike Tyson. Like. That shit cool. Man, I don't know. Before you go, just give your speculation to what round it'll be over. Yeah, what, what round do you think he might go? I hope. I really hope. Because, shit, Jake lost, too. Jake lost to uh, Fury, right? But I think Mike got way too much to lose then. I, I'm just playing it out. I'm saying to myself, if Jake Paul loses, he can bounce back. Mike loses, no bounce back. I don't think it's a bounce back. It's like, how you get, how you get knocked out by a YouTuber? Which is true, which is fine. But that is the question. Is every bag a good bag to chase? No, every bag is not a good bag. But he can't keep fighting Roy Jones Jr. And also, but we've seen Jake Paul knock out uh, 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 Nate Robinson. You've seen Jake Paul knock out a lot of and other Nate, people. And Nate, Nate has something to say about that because he said if if, if – Mike Tyson lose, y'all better get up off my head because y'all been on me since I got knocked out. But that is a perfect example of what the stigma will be. If Jake Paul knocks out Mike Tyson, it's going to be harder for Mike Tyson to recover from that. If Mike Tyson knocks Jake Paul out, Mike uh, Jake Paul can say, it's fucking Mike Tyson. He still has it. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. It's the uh, uh, six-time, ten-time yeah. world champion. They got you different know? type of cachet. You see what I'm yeah. saying? It's almost like Mike Tyson has nothing to gain outside of money when Jake Paul has nothing. money as well as... Nothing to lose. Like. He has everything to gain. Yeah. I knocked out y'all motherfucking hero. Called me Iron Jake. Yeah. You already see it's, it's coming. So that's why everybody want to see, man, if somebody don't knock this motherfucking white boy somebody ass Somebody knock his ass. But he, Jake Paul looks great. He mm -hmm. looks like he's in shape. The motherfucking sound effects coming off that damn midden sounds a little different than coming off of Mike. Mike look fast. All that shit cool until motherfucking that fourth round and then... He's a Mike. He's a Jake. Come on, champ. Come on, champ. We got to throw in a damn white top. Bro, it's a different type of vibe. So I'm just I'm just cautioning the situation. It's oh. cool. If oh. destroying, I'm, bro, I'm trying to make my point. If destroying yeah. does something football related better than me, you let a, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm sorry. But y'all understand the sentiment here. Because that's what Mike really do. Jake Paul just Yes, in. he's a professional. He, at 18, he was a world champion. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Mike damn. Tyson. All right. My point is made. Next clip. This is how football players be dapping up, bro. Strong. Strong. 
What up, Justin? Are you good, bro? Bro, is that true? So though? accurate. That is so accurate. So accurate. But you, but I, I could even see like you had different flares of like hand shapes to dap ups. I, I think that's two different things though—a hand shape to a dap up. But you know that the dap has evolved over the years. Okay. So you know, back in the day, you used to do the slap, boom, cool. Then I kept getting let down because you could tell a lot about a man's dap. Yeah, I well, said that. Yeah, you did. You, did. you broke I down the dap that. analogy. Dap analogy. Dap analogy. Now to remove all that other shit, just a slap and a hug. You can't, okay. you, you can't fuck that up. You know what I'm saying? So. But then you don't evolved it to all these handshakes. You used to have all these rituals and. That was to the people that I knew. But how did you remember all that shit? Like every person had a whole different. You know what I'm saying? Like you got the jug. You, you, you. But what's the when practice time? Practice time. It may take some time. And then you gotta create and recreate it. So it's it's a whole production. Is that like before practice locker room? This like everything. Room? This could be at a restaurant, this could be at the club, this could be, you know, wherever. Practice, meeting room, walkthroughs. If you're like, bro, 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 bro. Like, shoot me and my dog Kirk go ahead to Oh yeah. You know what I mean? You know, but me when did you bird. start doing that? Start, like, was this in high school, college? Everybody had a dap. Starting when, though? When that, whatever coach would allow me to create daps, I would want to do it. So this was in college you was doing these daps? Uh, not per se everybody. It didn't morph into everybody into the league. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, bro, you would go from position group to position mm -hmm. group. What? Yes. Everybody, everybody the game. had their own handshake. And their own nickname. People. Cam does not call nobody by their real name. If your mama named you something, I'm calling you something else. I mean, straight out. Golly. Go. Next clip. So is Tom Brady open to returning? Let's say one day there's a situation, right? Maybe it's the 49ers. Maybe you know, heading to the playoffs. Offense is great. Patriots. Somebody. Could be somebody. Somebody. Raiders look, could be. You never know. God forbid somebody goes down. Would you pick up that phone? I'm not opposed to it. If they would, I don't know if they're going to let me if I become an owner in the NFL team, but I don't know if, uh, I don't know. I'm always going to be in good shape, always be able to throw the ball. So to come in for a little bit, like MJ coming back, um, I don't know if they let me, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. Cap. So, Cap. I think it's Cap. He ain't coming back? Bit boy Cap. He just put in to be a, what, a minority owner for the, the Raiders. Raiders? Yeah. So this, this is, is it. This, this is, is all a, clickbait. A bite. This is clickbait. This is, do you see, what did you see at the top right of that that uh, video? Let's say one day there's a situation. That's off TikTok. Yeah, but it was uh, No Bull and it was his Shadow Lion. That. Yeah, his production. This though. is a Shadow Lion clickbaitable thing that people are going to, Click on, yeah. He's Tom Brady, the most influential football player of our generation. Mm -hmm. If he says, I'm thinking about coming back, that's going to hit CNN. They may talk about it at church. That's how important. <laughs> I heard Brady coming back past the you know what I'm Like, it's one of them type of things. Not a lot of players can relate to that. Now, do I think he will come back? Fuck no. You know he mean? knows that he like Brady is a hundred and three years. No, I'm just <laughs> no, but does he does he look in shape? Of course, but there's so many other things. This deal to, that makes him a minority owner in a NFL team will bar him from doing that. Also, mm -hmm. the motherfucker just signed a massive network deal with Fox. Yeah. So what if what are we talking about? Why? What is it? Three hundred and fifty million, and you ain't gotta get hit. <laughs> why? Now he can critique that motherfucker. Like, why would he wouldn't want to? Yeah. We want to see what you're thinking. So shit, man. Look, I'll be in that damn booth with that jacket, and you know they're gonna give him a jacket. How you gonna intro it? Oh, shit, listen. <laughs> damn, that was a good ass hit. The quarterback ain't getting up. Shit. Peggy, pass me that damn cigar right there. <laughs>
What'd you say? That's cool. Ah. I'm good. Nah, but I'm I'm good. I make more up here than down there. Yeah, we're in the a AC. <laughs> Swear. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'll make a uh I'm making some content for Shadowline. Tune in tomorrow. Another bag. Hey. Why? Yeah, there's no reason to come back. Hell no. So this whole clip was a cap clip. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a cap clip. Clickbait. There you go. Here we go. Second down. Questionable call of the week. What you got, pig? Man, Harbaugh. Man, he set him straight. So the Chargers, Jim Harbaugh has made some locker room changes. Not only are the players' lockers rearranged numerically, but each player nameplate now shows their recruit level coming out of high school, not ranked through five-star level recruits. What you got to say about that? Man, he got an edge to him. Mm. See what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what the edge is, but that's, that's something cool. What message is that sending? I know he has a purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. We all ended up at the same place. Yeah. No, no matter, matter if you was a, a no star or an all star, we here now. So would you care about where your locker is as as a like a veteran? You like, bro, who the fuck like? No, I would not. You just but think about this though, Peggy. What's up? And I know in recent news, Jimmy Clausen's story has been repurposed and resurfaced through him. Me and Jimmy Clausen ended up being and still to this day are great friends. If Jimbo asked me to do anything, I'm willing to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Vice versa. Jimmy Clausen, coming out of 2007, was the number one player in the nation. Mm. I was in that same recruiting class. So, full circle moment. Like these, it's not that you give a damn, it just. But you remember that shit. Yeah, you do. But it's, you got an opportunity to change your trajectory. Not necessarily change it at that particular level of football. Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. They left, as they would say. Who left? The people who gave a fuck about your recruiting status when you coming out of high school. Nobody gave a fuck about that shit. Shit. Nobody gave a fuck about it when you got recruited to that school. Once you got there, shit. That all that shit starts all the way over, bro. With five star, bro. With number one in the state. You but you playing like again. a fucking walk on. Yeah. <sighs> shit. So. That's Same thing with the to. lead, too. I Hell guess. yeah, motherfucker, I was the first pick of the draft. Motherfucker, you're playing like you need to be in the damn arena league. I'm... Not to take no shots at the arena, but you, you're you playing like a semi-pro. Damn, what happened to the semis? Ain't the semis. That's for the love of the game. That's a sport that's just for the love of the game. Like, I mean... Bro, I seen it's some in a rec league all star. Nah, bro, it's semi pro. If semi you still playing semi pro football, bro, it, it, you know the chances of you making it. Do they still have semi pro leagues? They got some like uh, arenas and. Uh, when I seen semi -pro. semi pro league, bro, them motherfuckers look like they was hurting going to play. Yeah. Motherfucker had two knee braces, had an ankle Put my, brace. Hold my beer real quick. I'm going in the game. And man. that was a running back. <laughs> 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 He had a neck roll. Oh my well, god! Just, my image of semi-pro football Bruh. was just the cones was uneven. Oh they had god. one big cone, the one small cone. Squiggly. Yeah, they just out there. Field Ain't pressure. no lines. They had the goal line. You know, whatever the fuck. it was. Got just ant hills on the field. Have a bit, oh. if, bro. Have a bit if it rained the night before. I mean, don't let them freak the socks and wear two color socks to add a little spash. Oh, the, not the ghetto spat. The spat, bro. <laughs> yeah. Everybody ain't had the same matching uniform. Oh, no. You can smell them coming from a mile away. But it, oh, let me stop playing. Come on. Here you go. Next clip. So we got, uh, is Russell Wilson opening doors for the black quarterback? Ocho, here it is. Russell Wilson says he opened doors for black quarterback. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> damn, so much so much for what Doug Williams did. Okay, but anyway, Shaq Harris, Marlon Briscoe. But anyway, I think one of the biggest blessings of my career so far is I've been fortunate to be able to open doors for others. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what role did Doug Williams play? Yeah. The first African-American quarterback to actually get to and win the Super Bowl and won the MVP. What about Joe Gilliam? So what did Marlon Briscoe do? So they opened no doors. It was you. When I talked Nightcap, I created this Ocho. Hey, hey, you ain't got no part of this Ocho. I, I did this with Nightcap. Mm -hmm. 
Huh? You are right. You know, you have to you have to get credit where credit is due for those that paved the way before you before you came. Yes. I think hold on. No, 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 no. Uh Ocho. I see where they're coming from. Uh-huh. And I see where Russell is coming from too. But I think he was saying it like this. His part in paving the way is almost like Marlon Briscoe, Doug Williams, all these great players, Warren Moon, Randall Cunningham, Michael Vick, you know, uh, Steve McNair, these quarterbacks, somebody has to pass the torch on. He did his part. He did he, his part. He didn't open the door. He kept it propped he kept, he kept He kept his toe yeah. in the doorway. Okay. Y'all come on in. I can yeah. say the same thing. Yeah. But we're not going to do that. You dig what I'm saying? Because the topic is about right. making sure that you do your due diligence with keeping opportunity flowing for the next generation. I do think Russell Wilson did his part in doing that. That's mm -hmm. what I can commend you. So shout out to Russ. Ease up. Um, Come on. Ease up. Because everybody ain't a three-time Super Bowl winner. And Ocho, everybody can't play FIFA and, you know, have that. I'm just teasing. <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, I see what he was saying, and I think we all have to do our parts. And wow. I think the game is in a better place by having a Russell Wilson have entered the NFL. What do you think he adds, though, to that legacy? Because everybody got something they add to. When Russell Wilson won the Super Bowl, I think he became the second African-American quarterback to win a Super Bowl. Mm. That's big. So – that's not. It's not like a little feat. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Now some would say it wasn't him who won. It was the. Yeah, it was Percy Harvin. Yeah, but, but he ain't lose it either. He ain't lose it. You dig what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. shit. That defense was very stingy that particular day. I think the MVP ended up being the linebacker. It wasn't nobody mm -hmm. you would have thought. Everybody thought it was supposed to be Percy. Percy went crazy. Uh, kick return for a tutty. You know, another uh, touchdown as well, but. Shit. Is what it is. Here we go. Next clip. Is them diamonds real, Boog? Is them big ass, them big ass real? Mm -hmm. I'm sure she got paid. Wait, 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 Harry. Oh, wait, 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 Harry. Try it again. Let's make sure. Is that an engagement ring? Oh, man. I see, okay. Yeah, there's a little it's cap. A, it's, a, it's, a it's a cap clip. Cap. It's a cap, it's a cap clip. clip. Now, people, you have to pay attention. <laughs> Understand what game are they at, Peggy? The Atlanta Hawks game. Whose diamonds are they testing, Peg? Portland Trail Blazers. Come on player. now. Of course they're going to. Come they're on. They're going to cap people. you down gonna, now. Yeah. But if that was a real situation. Who gives a damn? If it's fake? Who gives a damn? Like. The truth of the matter is we have to stop predicating superficial items to show how much love we have for a person. Mm. That should not matter. That should not matter. So now, for now, can I throw a wrench in there? Go on, throw a wrench in there now. Are you a religious piggy? Yes. Okay. Where in any <laughs> source of religion spoke about a ring being the significance of a wedding. I can't speak for all religions, but I don't see it as the biggest highlight. I can tell you this, being a follower of the Christ. Okay. God is the head of my life and uh -huh. my family and all that. Cue the church music. And, mm, I ain't never heard them speak on a ring. Get your wife a ring. And God said. Well, and it definitely, it is definitely much so, uh, uh, a commercial stunt or something, you know, diamonds are girls' best friends yeah. and all. Every that. kiss begins, begins with pig. pig. <laughs> <laughs> but these things, like, stay woke, stay woke. <laughs> What's up, now? Stay woke. Good stay down. all the way woke, fellas. So if you spend sixty-two dollars on a cubic zirconia, that don't mean that it's a full gold. Like, look, if you love that woman, if that woman loves you. You should not matter how much it was spent on that damn ring. Because in the book that I read to get the to get grounded, I never speak about no ring. 
Holy matrimony is all to speak of. So that rain pop gonna do good. She gonna still love me. Hey man, she better. Whether it's a gumball or a dog on a, a Cartier. You know, she slapped me up and I get a black eye. I need a couch to stay on. Help me out, brother. Help me out, brother. Now let me ask you this too, Peggy. What's up, boy? If it was culturally accepted for women to propose to, to a men, man, oh, do you think more men or more people will be uh, my hammer look like it is now, Bill. I love you with love, baby. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Think about girl. that. Yeah, that's, that's a true. great question. That's yeah. That's some pressure. If man. it was culturally switched, where the woman had to engage to a man, would more people be married? Mm, yeah, boogie, think, boogie question of the week for the fans. I think ooh, so. Ooh. What? That would women have to engage? Ask the people. That's a yeah. That's a question of the Here week. Here we go. Next. We gonna put you on the fourth and one. You know what I'm saying? It's boogie question of the week is that. That's cool. I Here we go. It. Next clip. Hey y'all, man! They showed your boy some love. So oh, man, they did this goodness. statue pretty much. This was at the practice arena. So all of them. This is small. But all of the ones are, are the same height. But it's AIO, a, a real yes. life size statue in front of the arena. Yes, he is. But what they did not say is all the statues yes, are this that size. size. Yeah, they, yeah, like, this yeah. Do, is Dr. J's statue that same size? Yeah, whoever's at the practice facility, all the players are that size. So now they miniature okay. statues. Okay. Because you know when they first dropped it, the news was crazy. How y'all gonna do AI? <laughs> this like what that? got me. It was one of these. <laughs> AI don't look looked at it, make sure. Yeah, that motherfucker said. I seen one of the comments that said they could have emailed this. <laughs> <laughs> But you hey, play too, man. hey, listen, not a lot of people could say that they got a statue of themselves, yeah. though, Peg. That's true. Shit, I can. But <laughs> next clip. <laughs>
And we got Caitlin Clark. So Caitlin Clark went number one overall to Indiana Fever and Angel Reese went seven to Chicago Sky. So what you think about, you know, they little they, their fits I love it. to the draft. I love it. I love it. It's different. It's different uh, aesthetics. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I don't think I don't know. I, from what I did see or what I have saw of Caitlin Clark, I wasn't expecting her to wear no stilettos walking yeah. up in there. You know what I'm saying? And I would expect it, you know, Angel to step how she stepped. Yeah. It looks phenomenal. Um, but this is what I'm flabbergasted about. What's up? How you go in one week, you say, bruh, I'm playing in the national championship, and then the follow, you don't got to go to no draft. You ain't got to go to no, no type of preparation. Think about women's sports preparation to the WNBA or mm -hmm. to professional, you know, that league. It's completely different than male sports. Yeah, it is. You know what I'm saying? It takes so long for the male Bruh, sports. Bruh, look what we're doing for Caleb Williams. This motherfucker, the last time Caleb Williams played a football game, was it in January or December? Yeah. Think about that. And he still ain't drafted. Facts. You got the NFL draft. You got your pro day. You got your combine. Yeah. You got all these analytical, irrelevant critiques. Oh, I seen a pick night. Bruh. Shit. What? If that shit was like this, like, look. They walked straight off the court and got look, drafted. Get, walked straight off the damn court and got. Still sweating still, from the game. Listen. They, Ooh, all right, you've been drafted. Look, damn. Look, they wrenched off <laughs> and got drafted. Wrenched off. <laughs> And walked into it. I said, damn. Yeah, walk straight to the damn Indiana and walk straight to Chicago. <laughs> it is what it is. I love it, though. I love their fashion. I love their fashion selection. Um, I would love to see more of Caitlyn's personality. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the, the professional sports would do. Another person who I thought was so dope in college. Who? Elena Deladon. She was hard. But she played in Delaware. So yeah. he, like you didn't really see her, like you didn't you didn't really see her personality like until first, she got yeah. to the league. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm I'm most excited about seeing what that looks like, you know? Who you think got more pressure on them to actually play? Caitlin. Caitlin. Easy. Anytime you go number one, That's anytime it. like it's a lot of pressure undue pressure because it's going to be an expectation. Shit, you've been dropping 40. Why are you only now? averaging 14 now? Yeah. You yeah. know, and then for the overthinkers of the world, you do pay attention to the beat writers, the, the newspaper articles, the social articles that comes out. You got to, you know, they can't protect you as much in the NFL or the NBA or WNBA or any type of professional sports like they could do in college. Just that rugged and raw. This, look, you lost. Yeah. You missed the last shot. Even though you had 52, you didn't hit the one you were supposed to hit. Facts. Well, we wouldn't have even had an opportunity if I didn't put up the 52 points, asshole. But <laughs> there you go. But this is all approved by Mr. Boogie. Great job, ladies. Next clip. So let's take a walk down memory lane on this young man draft day. Man, tell me what went into your fit, man, with the suit you had on. You remember what suit you had on? Yeah, uh, it was a gray suit, but it was a uh, pinstripe with sky blue. Okay, let's sky blue. I feeling see the sky little, blue shirt with the pink. Feeling a little Dick Tracy. Okay, all right, all you right. Know what I'm saying? How long did it take you to uh, pick it out? And how Effortless. <laughs> this guy. What Beyonce say? I woke up like this. Oh, that's what it was. I woke up like this. But was it a lot of pressure? Like, man, nah, I should wear this. Or I should wear that. To this, to that. Nah, but what you didn't know. What's that? My name wasn't on the back of that yeah. jersey. Because it was the lockout. Mm. Yeah. They lifted the lockout miraculously for just one day. <laughs> It's a business, it's, man. You know what I mean? But yeah, I um I had an idea. 
I didn't have confirmation until about an hour before the draft. Mm. This wasn't like, oh, the – it was one of five players that could have went number one that yeah. year. It could have been Jake Locker, Blaine Gabbert, Patrick Peterson, Marcel Darius, uh, and myself. Uh, yeah. So I didn't know until shit, motherfuckers was calling me so much that <laughs> remember it was an unknown caller. It was kind of, I'm not about to answer this shit. And then who like you give your agents just give them your number. Well, when you do your re- player report, they got your number. Okay. It's in this. It's in the system. Because that process, that three to four or five month process, you had visits to go to Carolina. I went to Carolina. I went to Carolina. I went to Denver. I went to Buffalo. Um, and I think I went to Arizona. Mm. And my energy was like. I ain't gonna be here for y'all. Y'all got the thirteenth pick, bro. Like, unless y'all gonna get real aggressive. And that was your first game you played against Man, Arizona. Let's keep it up. Uh, no, nah, uh, Arizona had the fourth pick, I oh. believe. But the mother school, I mean, the mother teams. I went to Washington. Where we going to Washington? I was like, what the fuck, bro? I played. Hey, so, so do they call you just to like? They they reach out to your agent and they say they want to. You got to yeah. go there. So did you start get a new number? Like, like once you got drafted, I'm like, man, nah, I need to change my number up. No, nah, you always keep the same number. I mean, you got to get reached. I'm saying once you left college, mm-hmm. during this whole process, did you get another line? Did you get another phone? Did you change your phone? I don't know if I did or not, but I, I'm i the type of person now, my kids use my phone way more than there I do. I never was a really phone type of guy. I don't even really like talking on the phone like that. Yeah. I seen a clip the other day that was like, man, you got to book an appointment to FaceTime with me. Yeah. <laughs> man, I'm one of them dudes. If I'm FaceTiming <laughs> with you, you got to mean something to me. But did you tell your family not to call you that day? Like, did, like Bro, I had room? almost like, there were like 100 missed phone calls or text messages in, in a span of. From that same phone that the team called yeah. you on. It was a lot of love and support, you know, because you made it. Yeah. Nigga, we made it. Shit, you know you're going to make some type of money. You don't know what, how much money. And yeah. they, they, they snipped me. They didn't snip me. They gouged me. <laughs> Motherfucker went from $57 million to $22 million. Damn. But either way, you know, it all worked out. More than you had before. I swear to beans. I mean, come on. I wasn't tripping. <laughs> they don't make that type of money in College Park. Okay. Not legally. <laughs> Here we go, fourth down. Fan question of the week. Let's see what we got. All right, Bridget Stockdale said, rank your favorite championship series to watch outside of Super Bowls, such as NCAA men's, women basketball, Masters, Stanley Cup World Series, et cetera. College playoffs. Mm, March Madness? No, the college playoffs, football playoffs. Oh, football. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Them ratings yeah. go up, bruh. Through they that go red. stupid. They're about to open them up this year, too. More teams going to get in? Yeah. I think this the year, right? But also, too, I love watching the uh, NBA playoffs. So. How long? The, and when it first starts or, like, just finals? Bro, my son just broke it down, the rules of the play-in games. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know the play-in games? I think I know them. All right. Hear me out. So, uh, seven and eight play each other. hmm Right? The loser – the winner advances to the playoffs. Correct. The loser plays nine, right? Now, if nine loses, then they have to play. T- no, 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 no. So, 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 seven and eight play. Seven and eight play. To, to take seven seed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then nine and ten are about to play. Nine and ten are about to, to play. To be nine. To be nine. And then they'll play against the loser of seven and eight. Yeah. And they play the and loser of seven and eight. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's a lot of playing. Adam you know. Silver been 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 in his bag. I mean, saying, he man, we been. Gotta, we seeing these we damn these other Raiders on these other teams. That's why we got so many damn in game tournaments and play in tournaments because the shit's competitive. Yeah, I told them. you, Peggy. What you say, book? Robberies create ratings. Mm. Any type of competitiveness, like when something's on the line, people want to see that shit. You Does this game up? matter? Yeah, every game matters now. 
Who do I got winning the, the, the NBA championship? Bruh, do we not know how close? I was seeing where a team could either have the second seed or the sixth seed. If that ain't close. Yeah, they was the West, though. The West wild. The West had a three-way tie. Yeah, the West wild. Yeah. Yeah. So, pick. Who you got? Just random. Early. The Suns. NBA champs. Suns. Yes, sir. I love to see it. But I also, Chris Paul. Somebody please get that man the championship. Going For the Warriors. Warriors. You dig what I'm saying? God. Or also, shit, you want to be, you know, you, you love a story. Doc Rivers, the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, but shit, I don't know if, if my fucking, I don't know if Giannis is going to be healthy the same Giannis. That shit would have been ugly if he would have had a serious injury. Yeah. But God is good. Next clip. All right. DMC said, is a hot dog a sandwich? Yes. <laughs> Why? Because. <laughs> Disclaimer, this is about to sound extremely sus. Anytime you have meat in between <laughs> two pieces of bread, that's a sandwich. Okay. Two buns. Two, two, two buns. Two buns. Shit. Winston National Champ said, who is an NFL coach you would have liked to play for during your career? Rex Ryan. Why? Ooh. Rex Ryan looked like he could be my type of guy. For real? Like real shit. Why so? Rex, it, it could be Rex Ryan, Mike Tomlin. I would like to see you with my man. What's my man from uh, Miami? Miami? Yeah. Yeah. I'd be fucking with him. I never had a relationship with a coach. Like, now the coaches, like, you think, like, um, L.A. Rams. Yeah, Rams. Uh, young dude. Uh, Sean McVay. Yeah. yeah. So, you got Mike Tomlin, Rex Ryan, Sean McVay. Yeah, I'm going to bring that top there. Yeah. Sean McVay got some shit to him. Yeah, he do. He, he was, was a edgy. Georgia, Georgia boy. Oh, where? You ain't know that. I did. Went to Marist High School. Since, since everybody, since everybody want to throw on Georgia, like we just saying. Now you gonna we, say they got the best coaches in the world? Huh? But, in the world, Craig. Listen, bro, it's been some real players. He was the Mister uh, Georgia for sports, if I'm saying this right. Over, I believe it was Dwight Howard and Calvin Johnson. What? Yeah, bro. Do your research. Motherfucker been by. Per capita, Craig. Like, <laughs> bro, we producing athletes. And the F is for you get what it is, bro. <laughs> Next clip. Joseph said, let's get creative. Put the one Peggy. All right, to Cam Newton. As a maestro. That, hold up. Time out. What? That's your Twitter name? That's my Twitter name. Shout out to Brendan. Fourth and one peg. You're getting Hollywood on me, Peg. You're getting Hollywood on me. I remember you was just a, hey, boy. <laughs> oh, shit, <laughs> never that. With you. Nah. Go ahead with the question. All uh, right. So, to, Cam, to Cameron Newton, as a maestro of the drip and a big stepper of the thriftiest of threads, which season is your favorite to orchestrate the flyest ensemble where every piece hits? Like a beat on So Fresh, So Clean. Ooh, who did that? Joseph! Yeah. Mmm. It'll have to be fall. Why? Because the fall in the South, you can have a 80-day, you can have a 70-day, or you can have like a 60-ish day. Mm -hmm. And I would describe my fashion as layered fashion. Okay. So I like layers. I like, I like details. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, whatever. So... Anytime I get to wear layers, it's just another thing to make something pop. Mm. Dig what I'm saying? What's your theme song if you like putting your shit on? If you have, I'm one? your pusher. As you're just walking. I'm the player. 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 Pays the cost to be the boss. Yeah, that's the one right there. You know what I'm saying? Look at me. Press on the scene. Did he say that? Look I'm a bad man, mother. mother. Like, no, he on, said that. Yeah, that. Come on, man. 
All right, last one. Gamecock Trey said, hey, Cam, huge fan. What inspired you to type the way you do, and how do you come up with the font? It is, huh, since we got ad reads, make okay. sure you go on any iOS product and download the app I post my way. It creates your own keyboard that you can customize yourself. How this was derived mm -hmm. was because I believe everybody has their own uniqueness about themselves. Okay. We don't all write the same, so why should we all type the same? Mm. I always use the analogy, if I were to give everybody a sheet of paper that's in here, and I say, hey, write this out. I am a superstar in any type of way. Whether you're trying or you're not trying, it's going to look different. So from a creative perspective, it's like, why shouldn't you have that same ability while you're typing something out? Have your own type of font. So Gamecock TR3, that's the reason. And what's the name of the website one more time? I post my way, pig. Okay. Get it from any type of Apple uh, app store. Gotcha. Gotcha. Here we go. Newton's Law, main topic. Peggy, I've been thinking about a title for this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to label this the power of the podcast. Okay, okay, okay. Seeing what the trajectory of podcast influence over media. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is something that really came down to how we are getting to where we are now. Uh, obviously, Peyton Manning and Eli's production company, Omaha uh, Productions, has just signed a massive multi-year deal with ESPN. Yeah, Disney. All right. Before that, we've seen uh, Pat McAfee uh, do something similar to Disney. What we're seeing in these major networks is that we have to find a way to be a part of what people are going to. Mm -hmm. Times have changed. When I asked a simple question off camera, I said, how does media companies make money? Through ads. ads yep. Think about McDonald's, you think about Gatorade, you think about Nike, Under Armour, Apple, Samsung, Microsoft, it doesn't matter, whatever it is. From the brands who are giving these, these media companies the money, they say to themselves, if this platform is rendering 80 million eyes for whatever reason, we want to be a part of that. That's currency. So now we're saying to ourselves, when I see um, Peyton and Eli mm -hmm. on Monday Night Football, it's nothing more than just a podcast. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And respectfully, it's not, it's not to, to give them a backhand compliment or to just say it's just a podcast. It's, it's something that they have a, 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 an opportunity to produce a great body of work from the confines of their house or wherever they are. They're not in a studio where normally we'll see a Scott Van Pelt or we'll see a Stephen A. Smith or we'll see whoever. Yeah, they're not reporting from the sideline. Correct. But the message is still being heard. You dig? And it also brings out a whole different side of it's giving more of an entertaining aspect to it. Because it's not just Peyton and Eli. I've seen them have LeBron. I've seen them have Tom Brady. I've seen them have multiple different uh, mega stars a part of that viewing. And that's where major networks are going. Well, you do your own kind of interpretation of where these major platforms are going. These these legacy brands, so to speak, are, are turning their attention to and I don't think that this is the last time that this happens. Athletes within this last three to four years have been able to speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. That's so true. When I think about athlete-generated content, it's hard not to mention Nightcap. It's hard not to mention Club Shay Shay. It's hard not to mention No Chill, uh, Mind the Game, Podcast P, New Heights, uh, with the Kelsey brothers, uh, so many different things. Obviously, I am athlete. The pivot, 
Yeah. And so many more uh, um, athlete generated content that people are now going direct to the source from an athlete told by an athlete and what have you. Do I think that this is, are we a part of a revolution? Yes. And when I see a deal like this that the Manning brothers have been able to, to kind of broker, it gives me hope. Because what I've been able to do, you know, the sole proprietor of Iconic Saga is Cam Newton. Yeah. I have not raised any capital. Everything that people see from 4th and 1 to Funky Friday has been funded by me. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the ultimate goal is to create so much value that somebody will say, I want to be a part of this. Correct. You see it happen with uh, All the Smoke. That's another podcast oh, that. Yep. Uh, I have a lot of high respect for, and it's extremely entertaining. All the Smoke also has turned their business into a production house where you see multiple IPs up under that realm. Yeah. Gone are the days where, you know, agencies represent the athlete yeah. and they broker a deal with a Fox or a CNN, CNBC, Disney. They're doing it on their Those own. days are getting kind of slim. Yeah. I've seen high quality things um, produced by athletes themselves. Where well, you see the Rajon Rondos, the Demarcus Cousins, the Rachel Nichols, the LeBron James with JJ Reddick, uh, obviously uh, Draymond Green. Draymond, yeah. You know, but but Cam, even with that, right? And so this era of media, mm -hmm. just just to give background. From a player, athlete, what made you start Iconic Saga for the people that don't know? Well, I started Iconic Saga off the mere fact that I was always misunderstood. I was always misinterpreted, so to speak. I would say something, and the name Iconic came from a statement that was taken out of context. Mm -hmm. um, Peter King, very renowned journalist that covers sports, Monday morning quarterback, uh, amongst other things had did a article as I was going into the NFL. Uh -huh. And he asked me about the Under Armour contract that I had signed at the time, which is the highest paid contract for a rookie at that particular point in time. I mean, you take guys like, you know, very prominent global stars like Michael Jordan. Yeah. When Michael Jordan was playing basketball, he could not tell his story his way. I don't even know if he even wanted to, but he had entrusted in journalists or sports reporters like Ahmad Rashad to tell his story. Yeah. Well, nowadays, you don't necessarily have to entrust anybody outside of yourself to tell it how you want. And there's been many cases where I've made mistakes. There's been many cases where there were some things that I needed to clear up. There's been many cases where I had to say, like, no, I have to tell it my way because if I don't, it can be – distributed any, any type, type of way. way. And I didn't necessarily feel safe by having my story be told from somebody else. Yeah. Coming from where I come from, being burnt, so to speak, or being impacted in a negative way from reporters or from journalists, I said to myself, well, if they're going to keep telling this narrative about me, I want to create something where I feel safe and know that there's not a gotcha moment in there so pause right there bookmark that so some players dig their self out of a hole or make their self look good with these podcasts mm -hmm. what about when you're still in a contract with a team and you having this bro talk and you say something wow so like what are some things that you would tell players even that still represent an organization how they should be able to talk and i speak? mean there's definitely some things that me being in the position that I'm in right now, I have a more unfiltered yeah. approach to how I speak. I don't know if I would have had the courage to speak like that being affiliated with an organization. And that's the realest shit that I ever can say. Mm -hmm. And I've gone on other platforms, which will remain nameless, that have been a part of organizations that, oh, whoa, 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 I can't say that. I can't produce that. I had to edit that out because it's the look. You care about what the coach will say. You care about what the teammates will say, even though it may still be true. Yeah. So now I don't, I don't 
work for nobody. I don't, it's my job to expose the truth as I see fit. Mm-hmm. And if, if it's some type of flaw, or they would say, if it's some type of cap in my, in my dialect or, or what I'm saying, people can call it out. I think everybody has a voice now in the comments. Everybody has a voice now in the tweet. Everybody has a voice now with, you know, repurposing your content to say, hey, I'm going to put this on my story. I don't agree with Cam. They tag Cam. They say this. They say that. And it is what it is. It's still subjective. And that's what social media has been able to do. The power of social media has now derived into now major companies seeing how people digest content. And it's not your prototypical way where, you know, nightly news where you have to wear a, uh, a, a suit or this or that. It's not now whoever is the, the, the source of the news has to be a reliable source. And I don't think athletes up, uh, until this point over the last two to three years had that respect to speak on these things, which is crazy yeah. to even think because i'm saying to myself obviously over the last really seven to eight months people have been taking shots at me because of my take not necessarily my take more so than just you. the person who is giving the take yeah you know what i mean i think that comes with just that fear of like oh shit oh man yeah but may the real live ever and the fake get exposed do you think more, it will be? Like more than ever, I think people just want you to choose a side yeah. and stay there. You can't straddle the fence. You can't sit up there and say, hey, I want to be politically correct right now. Shit, so when I hear Russell Wilson say, hey, I paved the way for a lot of damn athletes or black athletes to, to have an opportunity. Like, cool, stand on that. That's how you feel? Cool. I respect that. There's going to be some people that's going to feel like, hold on, wait, wait, what about this person? What about that person? It's not to say that you didn't disrespect that, but there's other takes that from the basketball, from women basketball to softball to track and field to these, wherever you want to kind of go with it, gives you that type of feeling that, hey, this is my take. Whether you agree with my take or not, this is how I feel. And from an athlete, if you can't respect my take, a person who has played this game, who has prepared for this game, who has been financially awarded by this game, who else can? So what about from the reporter side? If they say a take and they say, well, I studied, I, I, I researched, I did all of these things, what I'm saying is accurate, Like, what does that say to them? Like, They're also falling in line with their podcast too. Stephen A. Smith Show, mm-hmm. a podcast. Skip Bayless, a podcast. All these people, I've seen um, Sage Steele, with her podcast like there are people that are coming out they're getting on board with hey we don't necessarily need an espn to get our message across now don't get me wrong espn has way bigger budgets than going independent but i think the independent route gives espn the notion to say hey he's doing some numbers with his platform it just gives you more light. It's like you selling your mixtape. Correct. Yeah. And, and, and then now you yeah, sign it to a bigger level. And these people, like, people are really making a lot of money uh, from it. Um, obviously, I just recently did Club Shay Shay and seeing the outpour of respect that people have of you. Mm-hmm. And this ain't a production that was produced outside of him and his team. So shout out to him and whoever who produces their own show. It's done your way. I mean, I don't have to be a top-tier chef to understand when food tastes good. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just good. You know what I'm saying? So now media is the same way. I don't have to go to school to study director, cinematography, this, that, and the third to understand how to produce a great show. That's why you hire the right people. The mm-hmm. same way ESPN does, the same way CNN does, the same way Netflix and everybody else do. No different on a smaller scale with a podcast. I see it. So where do you see the future of athletes podcast? I, it's not the future of athletes. I just think the future of media is reverting to a more direct to consumer approach that gives all people the opportunity to speak on it. Now, it's going to still be 
up to the networks to get behind certain people mm -hmm. and you still have to have some type of filtering with your content. Like you can't, I don't know shit. You want to smoke cigars or you want to say shit, fuck, damn, motherfucker. Like that's how they talk normally. And that's mm -hmm. where I always would say like, I'm authentically me. Whether you meet me in a nail salon, hair salon, grocery store, football field, 707 tournament, it don't matter where you meet me, this is gonna be the cam that you see. So what I look up to guys like Snoop Dogg, I look up to guys like Shaquille O'Neal, I look up to guys, shoot, like Marshawn Lynch, guys who are unapologetically themselves, and they say the same thing about Cam Newton. So. When ESPN or if ESPN does come knocking, I will stand on, I have to be me. Because I owe a due diligence to the people who look at me to say, man, damn, like I love his authenticity. I love the way he's himself. I love the way he just stands on what he believes in. So it's not necessarily geared towards athletes. It's geared towards people having the ability to tell their side. Mm. And when I see... Peyton and Eli, they're telling their version of the game how they see it, and it's extremely entertaining. Let me ask you something, because that's, that's something that you just said there. Obviously, that's super intimidating for a lot of people to, after a game, stand at a podium and get blitzed by a room that's been waiting for hours Correct. just to get... To, uh, to, to critique your performance. To critique your performance, your attitude, all this, you as a person. Mm -hmm. Like, how freeing does it feel to kind of sit back, meditate about it, and really speak on, like, how you want to feel and what you want to say? Like, what does that, what kind of refuge does that give you, like, now, being on this side of, like... Oh, I, I've said it before, I feel vindicated. Just to be able to, to have a team that is working alongside of me to produce the best content that we possibly can in our unique way. You see what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be it is what it is. I'm not trying to be complex sports. I'm not trying to be wave media. I'm not trying to be, you know, all the smoke productions. They What they do makes them great. I'm trying to say we all can make money. Mm -hmm. And there's people who are making a lot of money. Shay Shay, a lot of money doing it his way. Seeing a vision and executing it, putting a pulse, putting a team, putting a DNA in place to say, listen, this is, this is our ingredients. You know how many different recipes of biscuits that there are in the world? A lot of shit. You go to Hardee's, they got their biscuit recipe. Yeah. You go to damn Bojangles, they got their biscuit recipe. You go to Church's Chicken, they got their biscuits recipe. You got uh, Red Lobster, they got their biscuit they recipe. They got some good biscuits. Yeah, come on now. You see the McDonald's, you see Chick-fil-A. But just because you're a fan of that, that don't mean you can't eat at somebody else's biscuit. Mm -hmm. So you slap some damn strawberry jam or strawberry jelly on that, take it back in the south where they put the, the preserves. Oh, not the preserves. Come on now. Not Come the peach preserves. Peach. You know about <laughs> that, you know about that? Come on now. I'm on you. In the mason jar right. with the clamps. <laughs> clink, clink. And you better make sure that you wipe the, you yeah. wipe the jar off because it ain't sticky. Bro. You'll have ants in the cabinet. And that's, on, boy, that's it. So, so that analogy of biscuits is the same way as my analogy of everybody producing great content. It, it's so much eyes and ears and, and relevance in this space that a lot of people can do it. So I would encourage anybody to speak and not be affected by not getting the views. I have 1,330,000, I think that's 300,000, whatever it is. Yeah. I have a lot of people, some would say, that subscribe to my YouTube channel. And with that being said, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. But at the end of the day, there's somebody that may say, hey, I only got 500 subscribers. For those 500 subscribers, that's your community. Yeah. They are expecting you to be you. They're not expecting you to be Paul George. They're not expecting Cam to be Shannon Sharp. They're not expecting Cam to be Skip Bayless. They're not expecting Cam to be Stephen A. Smith. The list goes on and on and on. 
So everybody who's creating content owes a due diligence and a service to being authentically you, your way, how you want to be. And that's all we try to do over here at Iconic Sonic. And that's what we're doing, but You dig what I'm saying? Yes, sir, ski. So catch us each and every week exclusively on my YouTube channel. Make sure you share, make sure you comment, make sure you like, but most of all, pig, we need these people to subscribe. Subscribe down. You dig what I'm saying? And as we always say, as we end things here, one finger, uh-huh, one pinky, uh-huh, one pinky, uh-huh, one finger, uh-huh, one finger, uh-huh, one pinky, uh-huh, one thumb. All right. All together. One, one love. love. You dig. And we out.